Now, we are going to meet the editor that used the entire front page of his newspaper, Aftenposten. Some might say surrendered the newspaper because he actually put the Facebook logo on top, which I guess is a big thing in Aftenposten, to, uh, to give, his, uh, his, give voice to this. Uh, when asked, this is Espen Egil Hansen, uh, it's the largest newspaper in Norway, and when asked about the relationship with Facebook, you have admitted that you have a dual relationship. It's kind of a frenemy relationship. Both a friend helping you uh, getting in, con in contact with the community and share content, but also an enemy thre th threatening to undermine the whole existence of a professional free press. We are looking forward to hearing you elaborate on this. Here we Thank are. you. Oh, I can use this desk. I don't break any community rules by using this desk. For me, uh, Facebook's censorship of Nick Ertz's picture, Terror of War, was only a symbol or a symptom. Something is about to go terrible wrong. And over time, my concern had been growing about Facebook's dominating role. Today, if Facebook was a country, it would have been, would have had more inhabitants than China and USA combined. Each week, more than half of the internet users worldwide access news on feeds curated by algorithms designed by Mark Zuckerberg and his teams. And in some countries, social media already is the most important, the main source for news, like in Greece, where more people consider social media the most important source, more than TV and printed media together. Yes, I was concerned about how Facebook use their algorithms in deciding what will appear in your news feeds? Because the facts that news feeds are run by algorithm, algorithms doesn't make them more objective. The algorithms are designed by humans. It's the engineers from Facebook's news feed team based in Menlo, Menlo Park, California who insert their personal biases and their company objectives into them. They edit. And that's not all. The research associate at Harvard Business School, Greg Piacotta, says, modern algorithms have become so complex that even their designers no longer completely understand how they work. So-called machine learning allows computers to learn from data and find new hidden insight and set new rules. According to various research studies, the algorithmically personalized news feeds may create so-called filter bubbles or other biases that effectively limits people's access to information. And yes, I was concerned about the lack of transparency from Facebook as a company. Facebook's editorial decision-making is not public, and you are not missing what you don't see. The rare moment, moments of insight come when Facebook exercises its power beyond ordinary users' feeds, as in the case of the picture, The Terror of War. The modus operandi for Facebook in cases that draws public attention is to say, we did a mistake, sorry. So yes, I was annoyed about the arrogance of Facebook in how they answer to society 
when being debated, or rather, the lack of answers. A few weeks before my letter, I watched a video from Rome where Zuckerberg took questions from students. And one of them asked, is Facebook a technology company? Or is it a media company? And predictably, he answered what they, that they are a technology company. We don't create content. We got the same answer here today. And yes, it is true. Facebook doesn't employ journalists. Uh, by the way, uh, evil tongues say the same thing about Aftenposten. <laughs> However, Zuckerberg's answer is a pure tactical one. And everyone, understand, everyone understands why. If you're a media company, like the New York Times, you will have to take a larger and more complex responsibility for what you are and do than, say, a telecom company that only fa is facilitating data and phone calls. But Facebook not only is the platform for news and content and conversations, it commissions and pays news organizations to make content, not a media company. It edits every stream for each of you, for each of its 1.7 billion users, not a media company. It has a group of staff deciding on policy rules, not a media company. Up until August this year, it had an editorial team editing its trending news, not a media company. It has manpower handling content, complaints, deciding to remove content or to let it stay. Still not a media company. Sorry, Mark. Like in the fairy tale of the emperor's new clothing, where the little boy screams out, but the emperor doesn't have any clothes on. In this case, Zuckerberg is so stark naked, he probably wouldn't survive Facebook's rules of nudity. <laughs> this boy says, Facebook is a media company, and Mark Zuckerberg is the most influential editor-in-chief in the world. In recent weeks, Facebook has taken some small but important steps in the right direction from my point of view. Last Friday, Facebook announced that they now intend to relax its policies regulating content that is newsworthy, significant, or, or important to the public interest, even if they might otherwise violate own standards. It remains to see what this means and how Facebook will handle its new policies, but it's clearly a new beginning. Ironically, it also ends the discussion about what kind of company Facebook is. If you do considerations on what kind of content is newsworthy, what kind of content is significant and important, and what is not, well, then you do what I do, editing a media company. The other small step is Facebook being here, Patrick. Starting a conversation, not with me, not with editors, but with society at large. A liberal democratic society like the one that gave birth to Facebook, needs institutions. A working court system, lawmakers and po a police force that answers to the people, an elected government. However, you also need the institutions of an independent press. 
And you don't need one, but many voices, independent of each other. And the reason is simple. The power of the press not only can be misused, it is being misused. Having a multitude of strong, independent medias are a key mechanism in a democracy. To paraphrase this year's winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature, Bob Dylan, half of the press can be part crooked all of the time. Some of the press can be crooked part of the time, but all of the press can be all crooked all of the time. I think Donald Trump said that. So crucial is this mechanism having a diversity of independent media that all democratic society have laws and regulatory preventing one player gaining too much power. And that's what's on stake now. One media company, company getting too much power. Not because it produces journalism, but be because it controls and edits the global platform most dominating in deciding what journalism and information will reach whom. Facebook is a gatekeeper on a scale the world never has seen before. All this came to my mind when Facebook wrote often posting the email telling us to withdraw or edit, edit Nick Utz's picture terror of war, or else we would have to face the consequences of being locked out of the community. What now? I think two things could happen, or probably a combination of the two. First, I think Facebook radically will have to change their policy of rarely participating in a debate about itself and its role. You are here today, welcome. You have now signaled that you will change your policy. Good. However, Mark Zuckerberg and the top product managers of Facebook will have to start a conversation toward society at large. Not once, but as a running dialogue. The top management will have to take the responsibility that follow, follows with its position and it will have to change. Secondly, I think the EU Parliament and the US Congress will get more involved in Facebook's dominating role as a global media company. While media has changed radically as a consequence of di digitalization, media regulatory has not. It still lives in a world of geographical borders and a long gone time where printing presses and broadcasting licenses created monopolies. Today, we barely have words to describe the kind of position we see from global media players like Facebook, and even less ideas on how to handle a situation where one or maybe two players let get a global dominance. I think that will change in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Espen. Please stay on stage. We are ready for the panel debate. So if Patrick and Linda will come on stage as well, together with Jan Thoresen, editor-in-chief of all website in Aller Media Group, and Monica Lied, who is the digital editor of Egmont Publishing in Norway. Please enter the stage.